So this lesson is perfect square trinomials with algebra tiles. Now, I consider perfect square trinomials to be a different type of factoring than trinomial factoring. But really, we're going to use the exact same technique that we did when we did trinomials. So really, we could do this lesson anytime after the first type of trinomial factoring. In fact, we might even see some of these in the follow-up work. And definitely after we do some negatives after the uh, variation 2b, then we're fully prepared to do this entire lesson. I tend to wait a little bit because this is really a special case of trinomial factoring. So if we just want students to be able to factor, then this lesson technically isn't even really necessary because they can just use their trinomial factoring techniques to factor perfect square trinomials. However, this lesson is going to be so critical when we do work later in the chapter of quadratics. When we want to solve quadratic equations that are not factorable, we're going to have to use a technique called completing the square. And in order to do that, we have to really know how to work with perfect square trinomials. We need to know the patterns that emerge, how to identify them, and actually how to create perfect square trinomials. And that's going to be essential for all that work, which then leads us into the quadratic formula. And then later when we do the chapter of transformations, we're going to be able to graph parabolas and graph other things just by looking at the equation. But the equation has to be in the right form, and to put it in the right form, we're going to need to complete the square, which is based on perfect square trinomials. So as far as a factoring technique goes, this is something that is nice. It helps students observe patterns, and it's really good for their... Um, for their mental work that they're doing with factoring trinomials. But really it's preparing them for the work that's going to come much later on. And so this really is a critical lesson. Now we have two lessons for working with perfect square trinomials. The first one here is just with algebra tiles, and I'll show how that works. And then students are going to explore on their own. Then the next lesson, we're going to really analyze what makes a perfect square trinomial. And that's going to be really the key. But for now, we can just give students an expression such as this. We'll give them like x squared plus 6x plus 9. And with the materials, we'll ask them to make a rectangle out of these materials. So here's our x squared. Here are 6x's and 9 units. And so we'll say, see if you can make a rectangle out of these. And students will oftentimes do this. So students will often come up with something like this. And I'll say, were you able to make a rectangle out of these pieces? And they'll say, no, I could only make a square. And that's when we have a great conversation about the fact that a square is a special type of rectangle. To be a rectangle, you need to have a right angle and opposite sides equal to each other. And certainly here, we have a right angle and opposite sides equal to each other. Not only that, but all the sides are equal to each other. So it's a very special type of rectangle. And again, we could do a whole classification of geometry. We don't have to do that here. But basically, we did what we're supposed to do. We made a rectangle, in this case, a very special rectangle. And so students can label the sides if they want to. Again, it depends on when we're doing this. They might still be in this stage where they're labeling here. Then they can write the factors. So we can say x squared plus 6x plus 9 is x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, I'm going to say, what, not only did we have a special shape here, but what's special about our factors? Well, they're both the same. And of course they're both the same because when you have a square, both sides of the square are the same. So what we can do is we don't even have to write x plus 3 times x plus 3. We have the same factor times itself. And what do we call something that's multiplied by itself? That's a square. So we could write this as x plus 3 all squared. And in fact, literally this is a square where the sides are x plus 3. So we can write this as x plus 3 squared. And I think that's really neat that we can look at it in those two ways. Length times width, here's the two factors, or it's literally the square of x plus 3. So when we say the square of 8, it means we have a square with 8 on each side. Here we have the square of x plus 3 because we have x plus 3 on each side. So really, I'm just introducing the idea that we can make squares, this is a special case, and we can write it in this notation here. And then I can do one more example with the students. I can ask them to a factor something like this using the materials. Here we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. And when I ask students to make these pieces into a rectangle, they're going to come up with a square again that'll look like this. And so when students worked with negative coefficients, 
they know that if we have a negative and negative, we're going to have positive here. And so it's going to work as far as the signs go. And then they can label the sides if they want to. So we can say we have x minus 5 and x minus 5. And once again, we have a square here. So we have that this is going to be equal to the two factors, x minus 5 times x minus 5. And we can write that as x minus 5 squared. So I'll say, now we've had two examples now where this turned out to be a very special rectangle, the square. So we have the same factor twice. We could write it as just, even though there's two factors here, we can write it much more uh, succinctly as x minus 5 squared. In the last one, we had x plus 3 squared. And so this trinomial is very special. In fact, this trinomial factors into a perfect square. So we call this a perfect square trinomial. Now, most trinomials are not perfect squares. We've seen that we usually get rectangles, but sometimes we get these very special ones. And when we do, factoring it can actually become pretty easy because instead of trying to find uh, two different numbers, it's just the same number. Now, at this point, we can let students work with perfect square trinomials. We can do a couple of different things. One thing we can do is just give them lots of different perfect square trinomials and have them factor them. The other thing that we can do is have them build perfect square trinomials. And that shouldn't really be too difficult to do because they know both factors are going to be the same. So if they just came up with something random like x plus 7 times x plus 7, they should be able to multiply it out or build it and then create a perfect square trinomial. And so what I like to have students do is make a chart of all the perfect square trinomials from the smallest one, which is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1, as far as they want to go. Usually I'll give them a limit, like maybe um, up to x plus 8 or x plus 10. We can go up to x plus 12. It doesn't really matter. And then they can also do the negatives of it as well. And I think it's important to, for them to really see the pattern. They need to do ones with uh, minus signs as well as plus signs in it. So they can make a chart that looks something like this. So here we have the factors, the product, and an illustration. So this could be a little mini project that students can do. And really, we just want them to be observing the patterns that they see. They could even write about it if they want to, which leads us into the next lesson. And that's where we could kind of consolidate that information. But for now, we could give them the products and have them factor it. Or we could just have them create all of these from the factors themselves. Going in either direction will really help them to see what the pattern is, so it doesn't really matter how they create the chart. But if they're going to go from the products first, then we're going to need to give them the products and have them factor it. And we could do it out of order. They could sort it out and just create the chart from there. So as students make this chart, or if they do whatever other work we want them to do with perfect square trinomials, they're going to start to notice the patterns. And especially as these numbers get bigger and bigger, like they're really not going to want to, I mean, putting 25 out here took some time. They're not going to want to put out 64 or 100. They're going to start to see the patterns and start to see why things work, especially if they not only factor it, but they also check their work and go the other direction. They're going to start to see what makes this a perfect square trinomial. And that's going to be really key for the work they're going to need to do later on. So for now, it's just getting them to see what a perfect square trinomial is, how they can write it, and then for them to explore what those patterns are. And the next lesson, we're going to formalize that more with the students.